Imagine yourself in the future with your significant other. You guys are trying to have a baby, but you're having trouble, and so you go visit a doctor. You go into the doctor's office and he asks you, do you want us to make sure that your child has no deadly diseases? The answer is easy, yes. Then he asks, would you like it to be a boy or a girl? This question makes you think a little bit and you think it's kind of weird, but you go ahead and say boy. The next question he asks is, what color hair do you want your child to have? DNA editing is a new technology, well there's a new technology in DNA editing that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. In order to understand this DNA editing, you have to understand what it's used for, how it works, and the ethical issues that come from it. This technology has two main uses. The first use is to heal people of diseases that they already have. According to a technology review article in June 2015, this technology can um, get rid of diseases such as cystic fibrosis, um, muscular dystrophy, and sickle cell anemia, as well as other blood disorders. The Sun article um, from no November 2013 cited Dr. Dagan Wells, an in vitro fertilization specialist at Oxford. He said, this technology could reduce disease, suffering, and premature death. The second main use of this technology is to prevent diseases in children that are not born yet. In order for this to work, the DNA would have to be corrected in a sperm cell or an egg, which those could then be used for in vitro fertilization to create a child who does not have these diseases. This could wipe out the disease for the whole family, all the generations. The Observer article cited above also explains how it, this technology could be used to correct genes that have the predisposition for things. You could correct the gene that gives the child a predisposition to get things such as breast cancer. Now that I've talked about the main uses of this technology, I wanna tell you about the three steps of how this process works. The first step is to locate the gene. Bacteria have the CRISPR-Cas system, which is composed of RNA, Cas proteins, and DNA that consists of these repeating sequences and spacers that are unique. Um, this, uh, Bacteria use these for immunity, and so we're able to use these um, systems in humans to get rid of diseases. Once the gene is located, the according to February 2015 article in Quantum Magazine, a matching RNA can be created outside of the body and used in the process. The second step is cutting the DNA. Once the DNA has been located by the guard, guide RNA, this Cas9 protein will unzip the DNA to make sure that it matches. Once it matches, the Cas9 um, has scissor-like apparatuses that will cut the DNA so the gene can be removed. The third step is cell repair. In order for the cell to repair itself, it has to have help from other cells. And when this process is not Efficient enough, the gene will be removed and therefore the disease will be removed from the system. Now that I've told you about how it works, I'm going to tell you about two ethical issues that arise from this technology. The first ethical issue is that it has off-target effects. According to Technology Review, Guoping Feng, a biologist at MIT Brain Research, said that the efficiency to delete or disable a gene with this technology is only 40%. If you want to change the gene or add a new one, it's only 20%. Therefore, this is very risky and unpredictable, and the article from March 2015 um, from the Independent says that this is unethical because of the risk that it imposes. The off-target effects can cause the genome to be changed far from where it was intended. This could cause unintended mutations that if it happens in the sperm or the egg cell, it would carry on from generation to generation and therefore all the children would have that mutation. The second ethical issue that arises is the issue of designer babies, which would allow parents to choose how their babies would look and how intelligent they could be before they're even born. This, according to Technology Review, brings up the problem of 
leading to a dystopia of super people, which is open to interpretation of how the parents want their children to, to look. Um, a Pew survey conducted in the Technology Review article says that 80%, 83% of um, adults say that genetic modification to make their children smarter is taking medical advances too far. Um, designer babies are also unfair in the way that they would only be available to those who are wealthy. Just the process of in vitro fertilization is about $20,000, and when you add genetic modification to that process, you, it goes up to $100,000. So now that I've told you about um, how this is, technology is used, how it works, and the ethical issues, I want you to put yourself back into that doctor's waiting room. What do you say when he asks you what color hair do you want your child to have? Thank you.